So, my dear ones, welcome into the sanctuary on this beautiful day, this Oscar day, and I know some of you will be going home to your Oscar parties and all of that. And again, as I reminded people this morning, celebrate yourselves as you're doing that because you're more than superstars. You are the very life, you're the very light, and you're the very essence of what it is to be alive. And so that's worth celebrating. So I say celebrate everything. Whatever chance you get to celebrate, no matter what it is, and I'll keep saying it, celebrate. It's a good energy. It's a raising energy. It's a good thing. And it's an attractive energy. People like to be in the company of those who know how to celebrate. And in fact, sometimes they even join in their celebrations. I can remember once when I was um, on the, 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 um, in a temporary residence while my own house was being renovated. It was St. Patrick's Day. We had a party. And all of a sudden, you know, around 10 o'clock at night, you know, we had people from across the way. There were young, young people coming with their jugs, wanting to celebrate our party because <laughs> they heard all the wonderful uh, fun and laughter and, and song and mirth coming from our place. Now, what they didn't know was we were drinking tea. <laughs> so over they came just as our party was ending. And, you know, we said, you're welcome to tea, lads. But, you know, that's all we can offer you and so forth. So you see, it's, a, it's, it's an attractive energy celebration is. And so we need to do it more because we can. My goodness me, if you and I truly knew who we are, the party would never end. I'm telling you, we go out of this world partying. And that's for sure. And so today we get to look at this thing called the common good. We've been dedicating this month of February to, to love in all of its shape and experiences and, and ways of being and forms. And we've looked at the human family, and today we look at the common good. And it's all the one theme. Have you noticed that? It's all the one theme. But the beautiful thing is that all of our centers are looking at this today, and we're all doing it as a, as a, as a family. And so the common good is a very kind of nebulous um, concept that we could all get lost in and say, yeah, well, it's a good thing, the common good, and, but what does it mean? And it just means one thing. To transform society, the only way that's going to happen is I have to transform myself. Darn it. But I do. But the good news is I can. I can. I'm equal to this task. I can do that. And when we look at the human family, when we look at love, and of course the love, the definition of love, as you know now, by now, is certainly, it is the um, self-givingness of spirit, of life, of God. It's the self-givingness of God. That's the description, Ernest Holmes, and the metaphysicians, not just Ernest Holmes, but metaphysicians give to love. It's the self-givingness of God. And what does that mean for you and for me? <coughs> I think many of us were taught that, um, that spirit, life, God, whatever you want to call this thing called life, this thing called this beautiful presence, that is an energy, that is a power, that is an essence, that fills everything and fills everyone. It's in you, it's in me, it's in everything. We're in it, we move through it, and it moves through us. That self-givingness, we were taught, that, that spirit or God is all the time emptying itself out, pouring itself out, giving itself out. Now, as truth students and metaphysicians, you have to pull yourself back from human descriptions and say, what does that mean to me now, though? And all that means is, remember, the infinite and the eternal and love and life exists in the eternal now moment and the everlasting now moment, and it's always now. There's no past and there's no future in spirit. It's always now. So the givingness has already been given. You and life and creation has been given everything there is for spirit to give it. And what did it give it itself? It just poured itself into its own creation and remained in its own creation, available to its own creation with all of its fullness and all of its goodness and all of every attribute you can think of that you would ascribe to good. It's all there full. It's been emptied out into you. You're full of it. You're full of it. You're just so full of it. You really are. So guess what? There's nothing more for you to get. You got it. It's already there with you. You have it. 
Now, what you and I are asked to do in this lifetime is to wake up to it, is to recognize that, identify with that, and then start living from that knowingness. Start thinking from it, feeling from it, being in it, doing from it. That's what we're asked to do. Now, if you and I could do that, the common good would be glorious. The human family would be delicious. I'm telling you, it would be a beautiful thing to behold. And love would simply be a given, just a natural given, that's all. If you would know yourself as you have first been known, if you could know yourself as your creator created you, if you could know that that power and that presence, all power, as we're told, is available to us right here and right now. And there's no excuse for any one of us not to be able to flourish and to thrive in the way that we so desire. If it's for my good and the common good, and understand this, nothing I ask and request for ought to be just for myself. It ought to benefit the common good as well. And that's why, if you want more of this and that and the other, ask yourself, what are you going to do with it when you get it? You can't just have it for yourself. It's not just to store away, stash away your key for yourself. It's supposed to be shared. Why? Because ye, the definition of you as the image and likeness of your creator is the givingness, the self-givingness of life to itself. So every good you desire is to be shared. Well, fancy that. Fancy that. Now, we look at this thing called um, I am everything and everyone, and everything and everyone is me. And what does that mean? And how did that? Why so? How so? Because of omnipresence. Omnipresence. And there's not a religion that doesn't teach omnipresence. God is everywhere present. Well, if God is everywhere present, God is everywhere present in everything and everyone without exception. Not only is God present, but God is present in God's whole entire completeness. Nothing lacking, nothing spared. These are super wonderful, friendly frogs to be embraced. To understand this is the first step, at least intellectually understand it. Now, to get a grip on it, it's to deepen that awareness that I am indeed, my gosh, I am one with everything and everyone. In other words, in the human family, uh, I'm bound to my human family. I am inseparable from my human family. I belong to my human family and all of life too. All of life, all of creation, and it belongs to me. That's huge. It's big to understand that. So if I'm everything and everyone and so on and so forth, etc., what's it with all the seeking? We're always seeking. And some people describe themselves, I'm a seeker. I'm a seeker. I'm a, I want to be finished with the seeking bit. Once upon a time, I described myself as a seeker too. Not that I have unfolded by a long shot all that I would like to unfold, but I've stopped seeking. I want to discover. Life is a journey, an adventure of deep discovery. I want to unravel the mystery that I am, that life is. And if I can unravel the mystery that I am, I will unravel the mystery of all of life. Because there's one life. One life, and that life is whole, and that life is perfect, and the life is godly, and that life is my life now, and that's the teaching. Right here and right now. So I'm a finished product, believe it or not, and so are you, believe it or not, in spite of the fact that you might think you have a long way to go, or at least other people tell you, you have to go a long way to go yet. <laughs> and we hear each other say, oh, she's come from far. You see. So where are you in your whole idea about yourself? What if the common good boils down to one simple thing? What if it simply boils down to love yourself and love others consciously, more consciously? And if that is incremental, that's OK, too. If you could love yourself and love others just more consciously, a bit more consciously every day. If you could have a few more awakening moments in every day. 
This is not going to happen 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no. This is only when you wake up and realize what you're thinking and you become conscious again. Oh my God, I can't believe I've been thinking about that for the last two hours. How could I be thinking of that? I'm taking all the classes, I'm reading all the books, I'm doing all the seminars, and I'm still thinking this way. That's a waste of time. Simply say, oh my gosh, I woke up. I realize what I've been doing. It's just an old pattern. I'm going to stop it and I'm going to change the pattern and develop a new one. And so the whole idea is that when I catch myself on, then I become conscious and then I align myself in that consciousness now and I begin to not berate myself, but to know myself as spirit knows me, acknowledge myself as spirit acknowledges me, even if it is a hard frog to swallow at times, but to do it anyway, to know myself as I have first been known. The Father and I are one, spirit and I are one, life and I are one, the power and I are one, however you want to call it. That's the understanding and the realization of any spiritual search. That's what you come up with. Spirit and I are one, life and Life and I. Now, how often do we consciously feel that or realize that throughout our days, a given ordinary every day? How often do I do that? Am I tearing around just like an ant in an ant farm most of the time? And not pausing, not pausing, not pausing to breathe which is the breath of spirit itself, which is the energy of spirit itself, which is the power of spirit itself, which is the life force of spirit itself. Can you imagine how awesomely powerful that is to acknowledge I'm breathing the power of life itself and it's breathing me. I'm breathing it into this physicality and I'm breathing out from this physicality. And I could make that breath a spiritual exercise by knowing I'm breathing in whole life, I'm breathing out whole life. And what that would do for your mind, body, heart, and soul is amazing. But never take anyone's word for anything. Try it out first. You have to try it out for yourself. So the common good is simply your good. What's good for you is good for the common good, you see. And so you don't have to feel the weight of that responsibility weighing you down on your shoulders, the responsibility of the common good. If you're taking care of your own good, you're taking care of the common good. And by taking care of your own good, I mean honoring yourself, acknowledging yourself, respecting yourself, uh, doing right by yourself, uh, simply loving yourself, loving yourself. It, that, that's a novel idea to some people, you know that? That is a novel idea to some people because their self-worth is non-existent and then all the various shades in between up to the realization that yes, I am a work in progress. I am always evolving into a greater expression of myself, but at least I know what's going on and I'm one with the program and then all those shades in between. And remember when you're out there, you're meeting reflections of yourself at all these various stages. Reflections of yourself at all these various stages of wakefulness from no self-esteem to understanding the creative process and how it works and becoming in agreement with working with it to be all that you can be in every good way. And so there is no separation in life, there is no separation in God, there is no separation in spirit, whatever you want to call it, as I say, and we all call it by, or understand it differently. And it cannot be named, it's nameless, because to name anything is to limit, limited. As soon as you name something, you're limited. And you're not your name either. You certainly are not your name. You're more than your name. And that we have to understand too. So be, omnipresence is the answer to this common question of what is the common good, the human family, and so on and so forth. Omnipresence is the answer. If it's everywhere present, if I am everywhere present, remember I know myself on all planes and in all dimensions I am known. I know myself in all dimensions and in all planes. It just happens my consciousness is here right now on three-dimensional planet Earth.
Now, on three-dimensional planet Earth, we do need each other very much so to help us to be wonderful mirrors into which we can look and recognize ourselves. And those mirrors would have to be those amongst us who do get the understanding that I am somehow or another part of every person, place, and thing I experience, and I can find myself in some way in every person, place, and thing that I experience, yes. Now, in the world today, there's a lot of social upheaval. There always seems to be, but certainly in our world today, we, we have it, and we certainly have it at our own back door, that, that's for sure. And so, how do we manage that? And it's a challenge, I can tell you, because we're so used to being tribal. We're so used to judgments and picking sides because we're into game playing. And in games, you have to have sides. So we're very used to sides, you see. And we are told over and over and over again, for those who are spiritually unfolding and really want to get to, to, to the true essence of life and living and certainly of our own being, we have to reach the point where we are non-judgmental and learn how to be in the tension of a thing, to be in the tension of a thing in a way that's for transformation. There are lots of tense moments that you and I get ourselves into, there's no doubt about it. But do we know how to be in that tension and be okay with that tension in a way that's going to lead to transformation or are we going to blow it? Because it is being able to hold our ground in a tension situation and not move into judgment and not move into bias and not move into whatever it is that calls us to blow the gasket that transforms ourselves and society, you see. We have to become good at that. We have to become very good at that because our tendency is to take sides. Our tendency is to judge according to our egoic minds. Dangerous thing to do. But to hold ground and to be ponderous and stay in the gap, stay in the gap, stay in the gap, and just be quiet and listen and I'm not just talking to listen to people, but listen to your inner self, your inner intuitive intelligence. And let me tell you, as soon as we blow it, we know it, that's for sure. Ah, oh, we know it. Uh, there was um, a new, there's a group um, that's, well, they're up there now, but they were absolutely fantastically um, um, famous in their youth. Is it a new direction? I think it's a new direction. And they came together recently and they were interviewed. And one of them was asked, you know, well, you know, we, you did have that breakup and, you know, you weren't all getting along. And, uh, you know, how are you all doing now? And one of them answered, you know what? We're doing absolutely great when we're not fighting. <laughs> and isn't that true of life? Because we all fight in some way or another until we wake up and remember. But keep the fight clean. Keep the fight clean if it's fight we're in. Keep it clean, neat, and tidy. And don't go beyond, you know, the river of no return, because that sometimes happens too. And so what is it to be? What comes out of us coming together like this? Is there an action under it all? Is there a change under it all? Is there a transformation under it all? Does it propel us into being more of our great good selves? It ought to. But we need each other's help, you see, and especially on three-dimensional planet Earth. We have very much, because we've all chosen all the people we've ever met to be in their company for some reason or another, so that we can all learn how to get along, you see because that's the key. And to do that, you have to learn, and I have to learn, how to be in the tension without using dynamite to fix it. And to be in the gap in the tension and to be 
listening, quietly listening. You may have to count to 100 under your breath. Or, mm -hmm. And your teeth may be clenched to begin with as you start the count and so on and so forth. But I promise you, it does work if you do stick to it. I'm not saying that we're going to manage it every time, but we manage more and more and more and more the more we do it. And we hold the tension more and more and more ably as we do it. But if we're going to start putting on our boxing gloves and say you're wrong, uh, my, side, my, my side is right, your side is wrong, and all the rest of it, or um, blah, 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 the usual stuff that I don't have to explain because you know it too well yourselves. So again, it comes back to, you know, what is it that's going to satisfy you? When will you be satisfied? I mean, when will you be satisfied? Is it, you know, when you have the winning lotto ticket or whatever, or when you get the ideal mate, whoever that is, I don't think there's one on the planet, um, when you have the ideal home, the ideal job, the ideal circumstances, the ideal whatever that is, anybody who's accomplished all of that will tell you, no, 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 that doesn't do it. Now, it's a wonderful thing to do. You can be in your confusion and your discomfort in a lot of comfort when that happens, but you still don't know what you don't know because of those things. So we know it's not about getting. It's never about getting. No matter how much we get, it's never about getting. But I'll tell you, that inner self is more revealed when we seek first the kingdom within ourselves, and the kingdom is high consciousness. When you seek the high consciousness within yourself, and you think from it, and you feel from it, and you do from it, we're told all things good are added onto us when we do that. Why is it we ignore that so much of the time? Don't even go there. In our endeavor to live a contented, fulfilling, peaceful life of abundance. And I'm not talking about abundance as wealth and riches and this and that and the other. I'm talking about the feeling of richness, the feeling of abundance, the feeling of fullness. And really, the abundance that we're talking about is a feeling of fullness. I feel full. I feel full. And you come away from certain circumstances with individuals or an individual, and sometimes you feel very full, you've been fed, you're very full. And that's wealth, that's abundance, that's riches. And remember, the more we accumulate of material things, it's all to share. It's not to keep or stash away, it's all to share. Uh, because everything is mine, saith the Lord. I mean, everything is mine, saith the Lord. And the Lord is the law of creation, it's the, the law of your life's process. All good is mine. And so if you have all good and you do have all good, although you may feel quite contrary to that right now, um, it's only so that you can understand that you are indeed the self-givingness of life, life giving itself to life, life flowing through life, life moving out into life. That's what's good for you, and it's good for the common good, too. Because there's nothing missing in you, there's nothing lacking in you right now. Which is not to say that there's not many of us in this room that have real honest to pete challenges in their lives right now. Some of us indeed, as I sometimes say, may have cried ourselves to sleep last night. Some of us may feel helpless and hopeless at the moment. It's a feeling. It's not true. It's not true, it's a feeling, and the feeling will pass. And whatever it is we're entertaining to make us feel that way, it's not true. It's a fact, but it's not the truth. And so when we move into the awareness that I don't know how it's going to happen, but somehow good will come out of this. Good will come out of this. This has come to me in my life for some good reason, and I know good will come out of it, because I'm establishing in truth now that good will come out of this. And when I do that, absolutely good will come out of it, because it's what you know, and what you know happens. Not what you want happens, it's what you know happens. Not what you want happens, it's what you think happens. Not what you want happens, it's what you feel happens, you see.
So know that you know that you know good will come out of this and I will move through this the stronger for having gone through it and eventually sometime I will understand the why of it all. But in the meantime, why is a useless question? The questions are how and what. How do I proceed from here and what do I do now? You see, and you open yourself up to that. But we need each other. Remember, we walk the road of life alone together. There's individuality in universality, you see. The individualized expression of spirit exists in all of spirit. All one thing, all one thing. But we all need to shine the light on each other through ourselves to each other so that we can be a light unto the other and help the other to come through and know that good comes out of everything. So on this Oscar day, please shine the light and know you are the light and you shine brighter than any light that we know of. You are the stronger light than that. You truly are and the light is power. The light is consciousness, it's power. It's the ability to mend and fix and heal whatever needs to be mended, fixed, and healed. It's the ability to attract good into yourself. It's the ability to let go of what doesn't serve you, person, place, or thing. That is within you right here and right now. And it's always waiting for your invitation. It will not come to you without an invitation. You have to invite it. You have to invite it because that's how much it honors your sovereignty and your free will. You must invite it. You must court the presence, as we were told. Court the presence that is forever courting you. Only the divine would not get fed up courting us as it is ignored so much. Only the divine keeps courting us and all you have to do and I have to do for my common good and all common good is to court back the presence that's always courting me. Trust in its power, trust in its presence, trust in its love, trust that whatever's happening in your circumstances and situations, they're facts, do not make them the truth. They're facts, and facts can change by you taking the truth and bringing it to the fact and dissipating it. That's how it happens. That's how it works. And it's all rolled up in the big bow of faith. Do you believe is the question. Do you believe that that power and that presence is within you? Because if you believe it, you will feel it. And when you feel it, it's on its way to becoming a reality in your life. So we do not bow down to false gods, which are erroneous thinkings and feelings. We do not bow down and give them our power. No, we do not. In fact, when we bring the power to them, they bow down before the power that is presented to them. So all power is yours and all good is available to you, but you must stand in your sovereignty sovereignty, you must declare it, you must say yes to it, and then you must say by Jiminy Crickets, and so it is. Yeah.